Hey, this is Chuck, and you are listening to Fans with Bands, the podcast where we talk to the fans and the bands they dig about life, music, and whatever the hell else we want to talk about. Today on Fans with Bands, we are talking to Detroit punk rocker Screw. Check it out. Hey, this is Chuck with Fans with Bands, and I'm talking with Tommy, Troy, and Bob of the band Screw. How are you guys doing? Great, great, man. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Having us. Uh, yeah. Hell yeah. It's fantastic to have you guys. And I, you can't hear him because I think he's muted right now, but he, he may unmute is Eric uh, Buchholz, who is the one of the best photographers in Detroit. Yes. Um, I know he's followed you guys. And uh, I, I, you know, it's fantastic, to, you know, to, to see you guys that are out, you know, jamming and playing at all the great, you know, venues in Detroit. But then Eric's photos just like just capture so much of the moment i you almost feel like you're there so i i gotta give a shout out to eric who's a, a fan Absolutely. and a fantastic Absolutely. photographer photo the best. he's the photo punk man yeah but and hell, a great man. friend of ours yeah yeah very cool uh, i had the pleasure of meeting him at fuzz fest one year and uh that was like i'd heard of him and seen his pictures and was like in awe and then i got to meet him like there he is, the the, right. the legendary photo punk. So there he is. Yeah. The one and only. <laughs> so I, go I, know, ahead, I know this year's been like super tough because it's been hard for anybody to play shows um until recently. And you guys just had that show, uh I think it, Tommy, it was for your birthday. Um how, how was that? How was it to get back on stage and do and do shows with a big crowd and have everybody like just going sh- ape shit? It, it was great. The actual, you know, it was sold out. Nice. So really killer. Uh, and yeah, it was, it was fantastic. You know, so much we're, we're fun. stage whores. So <laughs> it, it, for me personally, I love being on stage, you know, the rehearsal and all that stuff. That's, that's the, you know, you gotta, you gotta put that time in, but yeah, you, we love live shows. Awesome. You know, you know, you know, it's funny about playing shows again is like you go <clears throat> every I've all, I'm always my worst critic, number one. And number two, I always think the, the worst so I can always expect better than the worst so I can be happy. Right. <laughs> so it's funny because like every show we've done now uh, since we came back, which it's no different. Mm-hmm. Like we always pack shows, you know, we always have a great crowd, yeah. but I was I expected 10 people to be at our shows and it's packed like people are afraid of coronavirus not happening it was packed <laughs> yeah, well, so it you know it, it, it amazes me like the the thought of reality and what my in my subconscious was thinking was like it's blowing me away yeah. i absolutely enjoy every bit of it awesome so did you feel you know i, I personally have I've been to one show. I've been. I went to a couple like social distance shows last summer, which were okay. Mm-hmm. You know, it was great to see some music, but it wasn't nearly the same. And um, I went to a show, and it was outside again, but it was in uh, April. Um, but it was it was almost emotional to be there with some folks that I hadn't seen in a while, like you know, a year, year and a half. Um, did you guys have that same kind of? you know, like emotional feeling when you're getting up, you know, being on stage and seeing a bunch of people you may have not seen for, you know, Definitely. number of months. Oh yeah. It was amazing. Yeah. Definitely. Much fun. Yeah. So we have some good friends and fans and family, you know, they're real supportive. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, we, we, we still have a few friends that we haven't been able to see because of health issues and things of that nature. Yep. But we're looking forward to seeing them at a show soon because, you know, it's kind of like as cheese balls sounds, it's like one big family. Yeah. And we, we all get together. Everybody watches the back and just have a blast with our people. Right. And, or we're there. I don't know. I don't know if it's a correct term, our people, but, you know, <laughs> they're, they're friends, I think, more than fans most of the time. So, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. you guys do seem to have like a really close relationship with everybody that, comes out to see you it seems like everyone there is uh like you said a, f- a friend family member even though you know you may only see them like a couple times a year when they come out to that one show um what do you think it it is about your music your band that draws people in and makes them feel that that community sense that's that's a good question i have a, um, i i think i i think i know what it is 
I think it's because all of us have done this for so long. We're, we're not doing this to be a rock star no more. This is about mm-hmm. having fun because the people are what really make it for us. You know what I mean? We, 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 we play our music because we love it. We write songs because we really have passion for the things that we write, but the people just bring it. And that, that's what, that's our riches. Awesome. awesome. It's not a bad place nope. to be in you know, when, <laughs> when you can draw a crowd. I mean, it, you know, it, we don't want to stop and sit here arrogant in any way, you know, but it's, it's a good place to be when you have a, a decent name recognition yep. uh, along with other bands in town, most club owners we get along with, you know, uh, and, and you can't, you can't buy that. You know what I mean? That's uh, that we put some hard work into that, and yeah. it's it's working. So it comes to a screw show. You're going to get punched in the face. <laughs> <laughs> musically. <laughs> punched in the face. And, and who most knows? of our and most of our fans love to get punched in the face. <laughs> They'll tell you that. Well, <laughs> Is that on a t-shirt? I'm lying. <laughs> Come get punched in the face. Uh, uh, screw it. Right. Oh, hey, 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 Kevin. Hey. Hey. Kevin's Kevin here. just popped in. He's here. So How's it he going? You got to hey, Kevin. Down. Oh, do I? Yeah. Well, no, not really. I don't know. We're just. Uh, yeah, we'll put you on video. <laughs> just pulled up. Hey, hey Kevin. There he is. How's it going, man? It's going we're, we're, at, we're actually rehearsing. Tonight, Chuck. So, oh, cool. Uh, we have a we. Have, I I don't, don't want to jump ahead of the interview here, but you know we have a show coming up in a couple of weeks in Indianapolis, the Melody Inn. Yeah, uh, and that's always a that's always a very fun place to go play at, and we're you know we're st- always stoked to go play there. Very People, cool. yeah, good fans there too. Yeah, and so speaking of like you know because you're talking about you know, what we were talking about what draws your fans and what it is about the band. Um, how do you think the Detroit scene compares to other scenes you've been in, like, so let's say Indy or uh, Chicago or any of those other cities you guys have gone out to? Well, you know, Detroit's Detroit. <laughs> We're all Detroit boys. Right. Um, you know, uh, that, that's our hometown. And I, I think it compares well, but, you know, I would, I would just say, you know, there's only one Detroit. <laughs> no, there, there's a lot. Of, I feel there's probably a lot more bands in Detroit, and that's not knocking any other town, yeah, uh, or any bands, but for that matter. But yeah, I, I don't know. It's uh, Detroit is Detroit. Like you know, when you go down and play PJ's Lager House, there's nothing like. It. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic. So nice. And do you? Well, I, it's probably not fair to ask, but is there? particular venues in Detroit that you feel are like really representative of the town. Yeah, Lager House. <laughs> uh, Falls, yeah. uh, the new Dodge. Uh, Hamtramck is, uh, you know, we have a song on our CD called Polish Punk. Yes. Uh, we're, we're real, uh, you know, we're, we're all about the Hamtramck scene. Yep. And, you know, there, there's, a lot oh. of good bars, even over um, Road Rangers. That's oh, yeah. a cool venue to play. Yeah. Uh, the people, you know, it. It's just, it's just so you know. We, I don't know that there's very many venues, and I, if I know of any, I wouldn't say it. <laughs> <laughs> that we don't like in Detroit. Right. So the old Miami is a mainstay. For yeah, us the old too. Miami too. Yeah. Every every year we play that show uh, down. Uh, at the old Miami, and it's just off the hook. <laughs> it's the anti daily and alley. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, you got to go, Chuck. It's just crazy. It's just a good time. And there's a bunch of great bands. We're invited every year, and we love it. It's just punching people in the face everywhere we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I got a funny story about daily and alley because. Um, my my stepson went. Uh, he was going to Wayne State, and um, I I had some I had a you know fuck ton of t shirts that I don't need, and so I had like a Halloween shirt that I gave him, and he he went to Daly in the alley, and he said this big biker guy comes up to him and goes, "Where did you get that shirt?" <laughs> 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 He's like, you know, my stepdad gave it to me. He's like, 
it's it's fucking cool. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. That's what's up. Yeah, Halloween's been around forever. Yeah. So. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> so um, I want to know from each of you, and I and I, we lost Bob, but I think he's arrived. Here. So he, I arrived. All right. He's, <laughs> he's at the table. He's at the table. Awesome. So I was uh, I was wanting to know from each of you guys. Um, what is what is it about punk rock music that speaks to you and uh, inspired you enough to want to go play it and make your own music and play it for other people? Uh, just, just once I heard uh, old punk rock from Johnny Thunders and, and Dolls and all that stuff, man, that was me. It was in my blood from back then. I've been playing bass for a long time, and I love that style. There's nothing I want to play more than punk rock. Nothing. <laughs> it's like uh, the best thing on the planet for me. It's a release. It's everything. Awesome. How about uh, Tommy? How about you? Um, I've also been in the punk scene for a while. You know, I've been in other bands that aren't considered a punk band. However, I kind of like to think that I brought a bit of a punk influence to it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I like any band that gra grabs you by the balls, you know, it's hard, fast, tight in your face, right. throwing on a show, sweating, uh, you know, uh, that that's the kind of music I like. So cool. I uh, hope that's a good answer. <laughs> yeah, it's a great answer, man. <laughs> um, Bob, you right over there. We'll let him answer this. <laughs> well, so I actually, before I played for Screw, I was never in a band. Really? Yeah, I mean, so I grew up with punk, uh, like uh, Rancid and No Effects and so on and so forth, but yep. um, I never really was sought it out. So I started playing with Screw, and I was like, you know, this was a chance for me to broaden my drumming. And the thing that I love about punk is that punk is so raw. Yeah. And drumming that i'm used to doing is very is technical drumming so this is actually a relaxing vacation is to play punk um <laughs> just the only thing i had to learn to do was i'm a i was a heavier drummer so i had to learn how to play fast while maintaining my heavy because that's how i roll so right, right. but punk punk is uh punk has become more and more in my heart and uh i'm embracing newer things because i have these these gentlemen that have been seasoned within the punk community <laughs> to, uh, to go, hey, check this out. That's hey, check that out. Banger yeah. ain't never going back. You're right. Once he, he's played punk with us, he's done. He's it's, all, never going back. it's over. It's, it, it's kind of that way, Chuck. Yeah. I don't, I, you know, I don't know. You know, I know you have a wide variety of music background, but it's kind of that way. It's like, you know, once, once something like, uh, that stylistic, that music that you play, um, once you get there, it's really, really hard to go back and, you know, be, be in, a, in any t other different type of music. So, yeah, it's, it just is what it is, you know. Like I said, <laughs> well, you know, uh, for like, so I came from the like heavy metal school. That's where I started, you know, in my journey. Well, actually started listening to Elton John at first, but then moved into Kiss and and then got into heavier stuff and metal and played metal for a while. And there, it was the longest time for I actually listened to any like real punk music because I got into, um, oh shit. I, I think it was, God, I can't remember, but it was Black Flag. I listened to Black Flag and I was like, oh, yeah. oh shit, wow, this is fucking fun. crazy. And then- The Brazilian uh, all kind of good stuff. Right? Yeah, and then it was, uh, Ah shit! Now I'm blanking out on the the name of the band, but I, I, it was the longest time before I got into punk rock, and it wasn't until I actually saw live punk that I was really like it really hit me and it and I got hooked because it was like that's where to me that's where it is. I mean, you can listen to it, you know, uh, a recording, and you guys do a really great job. You know, your your um, smoking gun album captures some of that live essence. Um, but sometimes, you know, some of those albums, either they're a little flat or they just don't capture the, what the spirit is. But then when you see it live, you're like, holy crap, this is fucking right. Yeah. 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 We try, we try that in the studio, you know, it, we, we want to, we want to put that forth, you know, a lot of, a lot of bands. And again, this isn't a negative comment, yep. but they'll go in and they'll tweet it. And they'll over 
this, they'll do that. Uh, you know, we always try to play like our album. And a lot of times on stage, you know, you're geeked up and ready to rock. And uh, it even comes across even faster sometimes. So <laughs> we, we, you know, we, we like that. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if I asked Kevin what, um, what got him into playing punk. Kevin? What he likes about it, yeah. Kevin, he's asking you a question. He wants oh. to know what you yeah. like about being in punk, in a punk rock band. Oh, there he is. Hey, hey, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> Photo punk. What's up? <laughs> Finally. He's there. like a member of the band. <laughs> yes, that's what I like about it. Anyways, so. Awesome. <laughs> what are you drinking, Chuck? Uh, I, oh, there he is. Oh, there he is. Yeah, I've got a hello IPA. Oh, all right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've slowed down to an over. And, uh, I saw that Eric yeah. Eric put in the chat um, to ask you guys if you are jammed in uh, jammed with tuna can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're good friends with them. Yeah, yeah. very good <laughs> brothers. We we uh. He, he he had us introduced one night with Jimmy Doom at, at the old Miami. Uh, we were doing that annual uh, anti Bally in the Alley match. He had us introduced as Tuna Can, and none of us knew. And it, it, it's just kind of stuck in a joking manner after that. Oh, man. I love right? it. So we love it. <laughs> man, we go, we're going to go. If we back. ever start a new band, it's going to be called Tuna Can. <laughs> For an album, Tuna Can. All oh, right. Yeah. Have another CD, so <laughs> we can have that. Tuna oh can. man, that's awesome. Um, <laughs> so I was curious uh, if you guys uh, can like. I like to go back and get a little bit of the origin of bands, and I'm wondering if you can tell me about the first time you were on stage and what what it is you remember most about that time. It was actually a, a EP release party. We, we got in the basement and um, worked for about four months, recorded and played in downtown Ypsilanti at the tap room. Yeah. Uh, and that was our first, that was like an EP, you know, we never, we never had a show before then. <laughs> and the rest is kind of history, you know, it was kind of cool. <laughs> People were there and, you know, they kept telling us to turn down and, <laughs> <laughs> it, was all, it was all fun. By the end of the night, they threw us out. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't expect it, you know. We were kind of unexpected. And she got coming over asking us to turn it down. I'm like, you know, hey, you booked us. You know? <laughs> well, I mean, so seriously, how would you not know if a band named Screw is coming up? Like, it's, <laughs> what were they thinking? <laughs> we're an easy listening band. Are you right. me? <laughs> yeah, we're top 40 or something. Right? Yeah, we had a CD listening party, like, the Saturday before that, so they should know. Yeah, <laughs> at the tap room in downtown. Oh, okay. Oh man, they don't Funny. do many live shows. I think back in the there. day they used to. Yeah, and yeah, they had been far, oh, you yeah. know, maybe a year or two removed <laughs> from it. Yeah. So once that happened, you know, I, I think they were a bit shocked and taken back. So, <laughs> well, we had fun with it. People showed up, and yeah. It was our first show ever, and we released the CD at the same time, so it's kind of cool. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. So uh, along those kind of origin lines, um, I'm curious, what was each of your first concert that you went to? The first concert yeah. I ever went yeah, to? Yeah, first concert you wow. went to. Wow, Robin Trower. Really? Yeah. Wow, where was that at? Oh, God, that was, I don't know, that was... Actually, I think Jethro Tull was on that. It was like years ago. It was like 14 at the Silver Dome or something. Oh, I don't shit. Yeah. Well, wow, that's crazy. Or 16. I don't know. Kevin said Rolling Stones 81 at, when Iggy was opening for him. Oh, nice. I was oh, actually awesome. at that show too. So yeah. was Troy. You're at the before me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when Iggy walked off stage, he got pissed. <laughs> 
<laughs> everybody was booing him and shit. You know, he just kind of walked up, threw his mic over his shoulder and said, thanks. See yeah. ya. Screw it. I'm done. Black dress. <laughs> and that's kept showing everyone his junk. Yeah. <laughs> First punk show was Johnny Thunders. It was great. Oh, really? Hey, awesome. I don't know if you remember Nuncios back in the day. It was uh, a film, punk club. Like Lincoln Park. Like oh, okay. Southfield. And uh saw Johnny Thunders there. What a what a riot it was. It was yeah. so much fun. Awesome. And now uh, had, when I was had 16. a couple of twins there hooked up with. It was so much fun. Two <laughs> <laughs> guys the twins were guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh Bob, how about you? Well, uh, I'm a I'm a young whippersnapper. I still have hair on my dick. You know, that's <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, you a little puppy. No, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, so my first, my first, other than uh, my dad, uh, I grew up and my dad was a drummer in a Detroit band. That, you know, when I, in the '80s. So other than going to his shows, my first real show was um, was Weird Al in oh. 19. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, at, uh, at, the, at the the Ritz. Really? Yep. Yeah. yeah. So it was really amazing. Felt. It was Weird absolutely Al. amazing. So me and all my friends, we were all into Weird Al. So we all wore um, uh, Hawaiian shirts. That explains and so uh, his, his dad <laughs> took us, took us in the suburban. We all pile out. We go there and we're like seeing all these people we've never seen before. And I'm, well, I'm 11 years old. Awesome. He did, he did all, he did costume changes. He did sets. And it was the best show I've ever seen. In my life, that's cool. He, I have that to live up to, and yeah. he played only in the damn Ritz. Yeah. So no, it was amazing. That was my first ever show. Awesome. And and was that was the the Ritz when it was in Roseville, right? Yeah. Yeah. I grew up. I'm a Roseville kid, so I, I grew up in Roseville. Awesome. Yeah. I also, I an earlier show back in the day too. I saw Bowie with Iggy. Bowie was on the keyboards, and Black opened the show. That was fun time. So yeah. was their first tour. See, I don't have anything cool like that to fucking do. I mean, like, <laughs> like, man, I fucking saw Ozzy when he was not so drunk. And I'm like, you know, I saw Weird Al. <laughs> hey, man. That's why he's so banging on the drums. Man. That's right. You know, Weird, Weird Al is still Weird Al there. fucked him up. <laughs> <laughs> Weird Al is still jamming, man. You guys could still like do a tour with him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Boy, wouldn't that be fun? I know. Can you imagine? Be, yeah. I would love it. Yeah, we yeah. enjoy oh, it. Why yeah. not? Yeah, the screw it up. You're going to be weirder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Photo Punk would be there. Oh, yeah. He would be there at the tour for oh, sure. Okay, oh, man. oh, hell yeah. That would be He's awesome. He's got a choice. <laughs> So, uh, uh, what was it? What was the uh, catalyst for each of you guys uh, wanting to play music and and uh, you know go beyond just jamming with friends in a basement or something, but actually get on stage and and you know write your own music and put it out there for other folks to listen to. Um, so let's start with Troy. Yeah, I'm just from listening to like English beat and the specials and. I love them bass tones they got. I love playing that style of bass. Sometimes, sometimes these guys don't get me because they're a little bit younger than me, but <laughs> that's 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 what I love, and that inspired me so much. I seen the specials, and that just blew my mind how good it was, how good the bass bass was, and yeah, cool. So so much fun. Troy was born to be a bass player. Yeah, it sounds, I, sounds like it. Uh, well, how about uh, Bob? How about you? Um, so I played drums because um, I actually wanted to play bass. I never wanted to fucking play drums. My dad was a guy, you know, the the classic drummer. Yeah. You know, how do you know a drummer doesn't have a girlfriend? He's homeless. You know? <laughs> my dad didn't have any. My dad didn't have. It's so thrilling. It is. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so my, my dad uh, needed a place to store his drums. And I was like, I was uh, 13. I, like, I want to play drums or I'm sorry. I want to play bass. Yeah. Bass. My mom was like, get him a bass. He's like, well, how about this? You show me that you want to play music. He said, you know, drums and bass are the, you know, the same thing, mm -hmm. the same along the lines. He said, start 
show me you can play drums and then I'll buy you a bass. So, so I started playing drums and, uh, and he came and checked and he's like, no, you're not really trying. Seriously, take it, take it serious. And it was like that. My cousin down the street, he played guitar. We started playing Green Day and Nirvana and um, the, the, the rest was history. I never, he, we, we have a joke. He's like, so do you want a bass still? And I'm like, no, I don't, I, drums, <laughs> I don't have any time for it. Drums. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Tommy, how about you? Well, I was never good at anything musically, so I figured I'm, I might I might want to be a singer. <laughs> I uh, when I was a kid, I was young. This is gonna sound cliche and old school, but um, I sang a bit at, in church, believe it or not. Uh, and you know, I saw that you know, uh, if you say you don't have somewhat of an ego or whatever. That that's not you know I could see the attention that that gained uh, and then you know there were other periods in my lifetime along the way like seeing Elvis on TV uh, seeing you know just different performers over the years uh, and uh, that it just kind of hooked me so I I went and took us some vocal classes one one sit session <laughs> wound up walking out of that. And, uh, I know what the fuck I'm doing. I breathe yeah. and sing every day. <laughs> so it was, yeah, it was kind of, <laughs> you know, it was kind of, I don't know, but I've always had a, a, a somewhat of a lyric uh, and I like to write, I like to write music yeah. and, you know, that that's kind of what I do. I write the lyric and I try to bring the show and, and, and fake like I have a voice. <laughs> It works. <laughs> so, uh, do you feel like you have like the 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 music that you guys make? Um, is there any particular message that you're trying to get out there other than you know just have a good time and live your life? But w w is there anything else that you're trying to convey to to folks other than just you know live life? Oh, you've really got to listen to a screw yeah. CD, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have we have a message in our music. It's not all. You know, some of it's uh, some of it's political, some of it's uh, humanitarian aspect. I would say, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, there's a message, in, and then some of it's about tits and ass. I mean, <laughs> it, 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 but it's not all about right. that. Yeah. yeah, right. So, yeah. Well, I mean, I was thinking like a, a tune like you know that you have out there, you know, called "Step Off" off your smoking gun. Okay. That's like my favorite song. That's yeah. funny. That's yeah. funny. Yeah. That's about addiction. It's about addiction and, and go, you know, not being able to kick a habit. Yeah. Continuing to go back in into it. Uh, you know, it's your friend, as the song says. So yeah. there you have it. Cool. And are you guys working on uh any like doing a new recording? Uh, yeah, we kind of are now. We got um, um, Kevin on back. board, and, and uh, Keith is not Keith here. Keith is not here. Uh, we're gonna start doing that. Keith from Choking Susan. Oh, cool! Awesome. He he's been playing with us as well. Very cool. Uh, yeah, we we uh, you know due to the. You know what I mean? Like some bands, I I see you know. We've written this and we've done that. Yeah. Troy and I actually and Kevin formed another band and we started playing. We played a few shows as the pandemics. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, it was mostly covers and yeah. on for a couple of shows and then we got right back into the screw now that everybody's vaccinated and good. Yeah. So awesome. I was off having babies. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Bobby was on hiatus for a while, so. Well, it was I was only supposed to be on hiatus for a short amount of time, and then COVID hit, and it was like, well, I'll see you, see you in Oz, folks. Right. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> now we're back, and yep. uh, yeah, we we anticipate probably fall, late fall, something like that. Maybe get back in and recording an EP. Awesome. Yeah. 10 songs, 10, 12 songs, CDs, uh, you know, just 
for, uh, for me personally, I don't know how these guys feel. I'm just speaking for me. Uh, I just kind of think it's a little bit overplayed, you know, at this point. Yeah. Go in and record an EP and add four or five good songs uh, and maybe record six months later. And, re- you know, that's kind of what I, I like to do rather than, you know, we're a whole CD. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's, I've seen uh, quite a few bands that just do, you know, they're just doing singles, you know, they're. Yeah. yeah. They're, well, that's, that's the, that's the environment of the music industry and the music scene. Yeah. Right. It's, not, it's funny. Nineties came around and it was like, Oh, we're going to sell nothing but records. Right. Singles don't exist anymore. Unless you've got three of them ready to be on MTV. Right. So after that, now it's all about singles again. It's really funny how music like go like, that's how it was like in the, you know, the seventies. Oh, you know, like, it goes back, back around. Right. right. Yeah. Exactly. So that the doing that is a very, it's a far superior uh, way of marketing for us. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. 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 Just like my exactly. <laughs> That's what I meant to say. Do four or five songs. <laughs> That's it. Right. Yeah. Are you joking me? If I could, if I could do anything, I would play seven songs if they're 30 seconds a piece, that's all you get. Want to make them want to come back. <laughs> Call it a day. He's, we'll Minute go. 45. I'm always the one trying to slice fucking uh, songs off. I'm like, no, no. Like, I'll be five months to cut the 25 minutes set, Bob. <laughs> Oh man. Like it's all about being fast. Yes. Yeah, when he gets back there and he's got to play 12, 14 songs. Oh, and by man. the end of the night, he's like, okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's pretty strenuous. Yeah. He's, yeah. By the end of the Especially night, the way he plays. He's lost five pounds easily. Yeah. I look like I piss myself every we, time I'm done. We don't call <laughs> for no reason. So, <laughs> uh, you know what? I've, I've, I, it just doesn't make any sense not to hit them hard. That's well, yeah, yeah. I've always thought, you know, I've always admired uh, drummers because, uh, you know, secretly I wanted to be a drummer, but I was never that coordinated. And um, yeah, when I see a drummer that's just tearing it up, it's just like, yeah. well, you have hope because most of us aren't. <laughs> we're just lucky. We're just lucky to remember where that good hit was. <laughs> I mean this in a good way, but every drummer I've ever made, met is kind of crazy. <laughs> hey, Chuck, if I, if I may um, interject. <laughs> yeah. One of the things um, I've always noticed and appreciated about Bob's drumming is that at the end of every show, he tends to launch. And <laughs> launch out of his seat. And I don't know if that's just because he's still on a roll and the band has ended, or just because he needs to go into orbit. <laughs> hold <laughs> so wait, uh, right. so eric you gotta tell me like what is this launch like he, he like just like literally pops out of the on, the on his very last note he will launch out of his seat <laughs> and uh god forbid you get in his way because <laughs> he's going someplace we don't know where he's going but he's we don't know where he's i'll going. tell you what when i get up i, I my body goes exit exit <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> It makes for great photos. Uh, <laughs> there, there's been a couple of times where he's had to come back because people want to show their time. He's just looking at us like, really? I just, there, man. I'm done with this. <laughs> there's a snare on the floor. <laughs> Obviously, if people want more, we're going to give it to of them. So. Yeah. So, That's why they're there. So, Eric, I got a question for you, and that is, uh, how did you, uh, what was it about the band Screw that, like, you said that, you know, I love this band. I want to follow them around and take pictures. <laughs> uh, I was following around a different band prior to uh, <clears throat> Screw. I became the personal photographer, if you can call it that, of the band uh, Hit Society. I was enamored by them for quite a while, and then they uh, broke up. And somehow Screw and I crossed paths, and I would believe it would be on a New Year's Eve night with uh, Choking Susan, uh, Duke and the Hellraisers, and uh, one other band uh, was another one of the uh, Culling Caffeine bands, and Screw was there, oh, and uh, yeah. I was immediately taken by the band and uh, decided that if I was going to follow any band, that these guys would seem to, you know, give me some good material to photograph, mm-hmm. and I kind of became a, a photographic groupie <laughs> until, of course, I got to know them more personally, and, and uh, we became good close friends. So uh, we've been uh, this way um, for some time. Um, 
I think that uh, of all the bands in Detroit that I've gotten to know on a personal level, they're probably uh, my brothers. I could, awesome. I could put it that way. Yeah. yeah. That's true. Very cool. Yep. Very yeah. cool. That's true. Yeah. How, how long, how long have you been photographing screw? Just trying to think. Oh uh, gosh, uh, I don't remember the exact date. I started start. off taking pictures of people's asses. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, with, with Tommy Bass, I didn't need the wide lens. That's yeah. <laughs> Not my ass. <laughs> <laughs> that was probably 2015. 2000. Yeah, I think that was about 15. Oh, cool. Very cool. Awesome. You know, a lot of a lot of bands too. They feel the same way. As, if, if you're a band and you're working, I don't know one band. I can't name one band right now that wouldn't want to work at their show, period. Because they know he's the best at what he does, and they're going to get killer pictures. Yes. But yeah. that is not why we have him at our show. He said he's a brother, yeah. and you know, and it's a, it's a little bit more than that. So. Right. But I'll tell you what, he takes the best yes, pictures of does. me I've ever had in my whole entire life. Yeah. <laughs> He, when he's around, I'm like, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I put it myself it and take my good. fucking shirt off. It's not easy. Yeah. He, he tries to help me when I take my shirt off, but it's really just difficult to, to crack the crowd me out. Attractive. Well, Bob, you wouldn't, you wouldn't believe how much work it is. Your, your photos require. <laughs> What's that? Photoshop is your friend. Photoshop is oh, your friend. Yes, yeah, good. Yeah. Slim me down, homie. Yes. Slim <laughs> <laughs> oh god Bob rock yeah oh yeah love him. you also have to mention that um along with screw i've met a lot of a lot of other bands some from out of town and one in particular that seems to be a, a great match for any screw event is uh tiger sex they seem oh. to bring a certain uh element that complements screw quite nicely and i tell you what i've got some of the best photos when Kelly will come on stage with Tommy or vice versa. Those two have a chemistry that you don't see very often. Uh, those two alone on stage are pretty damn awesome. I can always count on Tommy for at least one circus act, you know, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but, but when uh, so Kelly on stage with them, yeah, that's that's magic. I really enjoy that. Yeah, <laughs> they uh, didn't. Tiger Sex was at the last show at uh, for Tommy's uh, birthday. Yeah, party. they were in for the birthday bash. You know, they're good friends of ours. It's not. It's not. Uh, you know, look. You know, we, we've done probably more shows with them than any other band, and I would guess to say the same. With them. So they're a great band. There's a, you know, there's a lot of bands we love working with here. Choking Susan is one of them. Yep. Uh, here in Detroit, the Hormones, uh, yeah. the DPs, you know, there there are many, many bands here in Detroit that we love working with. And it's like like we were saying earlier, it's cheese balls, it sounds, it's, it's a family. You know, when, when you have a get together like that, it's just like everybody's there. You know? yeah. It's kind of cool. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> speaking of... Uh, well, not really speaking of anything, but uh, going back to like origin things, I another question I really like to ask, and it's going to be for everybody, including Eric, is uh, what was the first album you bought? So let's let's start with uh, Tom. Can I, can, I start? Yeah. can I start with it? Yeah, yeah, go. Yeah, okay, the um, Shocking Blue. Really? Yeah, the LP. Yes, I bought that back when. Wow, gosh, back in the seventies. That oh. was my first LP. And Holy the rest cow! Was yeah, that's yeah. a great album. Holy shit! It is. It, is. it yeah. really is. It stands the test of time. Yeah, it was covered. Uh, Venus was covered by, um, gosh, one of the girl bands. I can't remember the name right now. Oh yeah, uh, uh, the Bangles, maybe. Perhaps yes. Yeah. Or yeah, or the Go Go's. The Go Go's. Yeah. <laughs> it could be one of those, but that was one of my favorite bands back in the day. So yeah, nice, very cool. Yeah. And I think that uh, wasn't that song on. Um, Guardians of the or, or that what was that Guardians of the Galaxy or whatever didn't they play that? Oh gosh, you got me there. I yeah. don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, uh, Tommy, how about you? Oh wow, you know, I to be perfectly honest with you, I I, I really don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Yeah, you're like wow. <laughs> 
you know, I grew up in a household and I, I'm the youngest uh-huh. and I'm no spring chicken at this stage my career right now. And, uh, but they, I had like all different kinds of music around. We had you know anything from gospel to like, you know, old school, like Jerry Lee Lewis <laughs> and all that whole era, uh-huh. the town era. I grew up in Southwest Detroit. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I've never, um, I've always kind of, even before I really, really got into the punk scene, I've always uh, towards like a, the bluesy, yeah, rocky stuff. So, you know, it, it probably something, I don't know, maybe a, a Stones album or something from back in the day. Right. Cool. First album. So awesome. Uh, Troy, how about you? Yeah, mine was uh, Never Mind the Bullocks. But- <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Uh, it was such that a was great album, song. man. I must have freaking wore that thing out. Of me. You know, you can't mention that album without immediately conjuring up a vision of that album art. Yeah. It's so iconic. Yeah. yeah. It was so much fun back then to <laughs> listen to that. Man, that is a classic. Right? Back in the day, everyone knew you were a punk. You know what I mean? Yeah. And because back in the day, it was like, yeah, you know, metal has always been in, in the Detroit music scene. Uh, and I don't know if you remember this, Chuck, but way back in the day, you know, the two the two didn't really get along that well. We were yeah. we were booked. Troy and I go back to a, a band called the Select Four. Uh, and that's where, what we started out doing. And we would get booked into shows with uh, people wearing spandex and, and things of that nature. We were in, you know, combat boots and leather coats. And, yeah. you know, it really, it really playing didn't. Playing sex pistols. Yeah, covers. playing cover, you know, and it really didn't gel. It was like they either loved us or they hated us. Yeah. As well as the bands that we played with. So it's a lot different now. It, it, it's it's a little bit less, you know. Now everyone just hates you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> uh, uh, Bob, how about you? Uh, so other than like every album that my parents would buy me, I tell them, hey, I want this, I want that. Um, actually, the very first album I ever bought was a local band, so, uh, which was called, a lot of people know, Loud House. Do you remember yeah. Loud House? Oh, that sounds uh, yeah, familiar. Right? Yeah. yeah. That so was that, that was Vinny was fun, Correct. Right? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. All right. so that was the first I bought that at record time yeah. uh, because I, what I was doing was I was looking for my buddy worked at record time and, he, and I was like I was looking for something he's like you know check this band out because they would play music over uh, you know they would select their own album that they wanted to play he's like check this band out and then then I found out you know Sponge was already by, by then I bought that in uh, it was 94 95 oh so they were already going yeah so yeah, that was my first album. Uh, then after that, it was all mainstream stuff. Death Count. <laughs> That's all right. We won't hold it. Yeah, Death Count. Count. Good. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, with Aerosmith rocks. Yeah. Is is Kevin there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's me. Aerosmith rocks. Oh, all right. Cool. Yeah. Click the dog. I fucking still love that song. Yeah. Oh, you know that that album that's is that fucking awesome. That's he cool. wants us to cover it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he still plays it at rehearsal. We come. I played it on the way here. I really <laughs> it just pops up on my, my thing. He gets it in the mood, man. Yeah, right, talking. Yeah. right on. Whatever oh, words. Yeah. So uh, if you guys. Uh, Chuck, Chuck, you have not answered the same question. What oh, was your my, first album? Yeah. Oh, yeah, what? yeah. So the first album I bought with my own money was uh, Goodbye Yellow, Yellow Brick Road by oh, Elton John. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I bought that too. Yeah. I, I was, it was oh, back. Yeah. That was when I lived in Detroit. Um, and I was, here. what, uh, I was in fifth grade, I think. And uh, um, a friend of mine, I, so I had this friend, Jimmy. I think I've mentioned this in another episode or something, but I had this friend, Jimmy, lived like three doors down. And uh, he could he could sing like Elton John. And I, wow. I didn't even know what it was, you know, and, and he's singing it and playing some, and I think he had an older, older brother that had some of those albums. And I was like, holy shit, this is awesome. And then um, I, I still remember when I told my parents, I go, I, you know, I want to get Elton John album. My dad looked at me going, 
what do you want to do? <laughs> he was just, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. he's, he's, oh, got great old hits, man. Yeah, because he was, you know, into like, you know, um, he wanted yeah. to do. Yeah. Right. He was like, what the hell is this? But uh, <laughs> my mom was like, yeah, she was totally into it. But uh, my dad was like, ah, I don't know about this. But uh, but then when I got into Kiss, they were all off the, you know, like, what the fuck's going on here? So, yeah. <laughs> I seen them years ago. Well, I've seen Kiss once. Oh. It, it was definitely a memorable show. I was actually almost in awe. Yeah. Because I was on some substances at the time. <laughs> I really, I was really like taken back by the, shit, the fireworks and all the shit going on. Like, oh yeah, yeah. Um, Sub- oh, substance is help. I got something right. for you real quick. So me being the young boy, so when I was a kid, I used my cousin used to watch me. And he was obsessed with Kiss. So we had that Kiss poster. They had the four, the four faces on it. Oh yeah. The demon was he's going ah. Yeah. I used to be so fucking scared of that. Nice I was body. so scared. So he used to scare me all the time with it. And, you know, so I always thought Kiss was fucking scary. And I also thought the Rolling Stones, their, their, uh, their lips uh, was Kiss. Uh, it, it, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was a kid and I didn't know shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean that logo? Yeah. By the way, I was born in 1980, so I'm not that young of a man, but... <laughs> But yeah, I thought I'd add that, you know, everybody's, nice. everybody's getting trashed at Kiss, and I'm fucking scared pissing in my diaper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man. So uh, if you guys could play anywhere in the world, no, uh, where, where would where would you go and, and who would you like to be on the stage with? Say that one more time. So if you could play yeah. anywhere in the world, at any stage, any country, um, wow. where would you go play? Like which city, which country, and who would you like to be on stage with? Social distortion for me. No more. And if it's indiv- right. you can go by individual if you get. I mean, I'm sure it's not a group consensus, but if it's social distortion for me. Just at the Fillmore in Detroit, I'd be happy. <laughs> awesome. I'd die a happy man. Yeah, that would be fine. Fantastic. Uh, T- Tommy, how about you? Um, that that's dual. That's a dual. Uh, realistically, I don't care about the venue. <laughs> All right. There's obviously great venues across the country and across the world. Yeah. Uh, but definitely uh, Iggy. Oh, cool. Yeah, Iggy and or Rancid. Nice. Put me on a tour with either one of those, and I'm a happy camper, not complaining about shit. <laughs> I thought Tommy would say boys to men. <laughs> hey, Keith's here now. Hey. 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 So, so Keith, who, who would you, Keith, who would you like to jam with? Who would you like to jam with? If you could jam where? With, like play a show anywhere. I already have. Oh. Already did? Yeah. Who? What is who? it? The who? Over here. Okay. What oh. man? He's been around. Foxfire, the exploited. No oh, shit. That's fantastic. Fantastic. Did you hear Yeah. He played angling with exploited. Holy shit. All right. Foxfire. Yeah. No yeah. shit. Oh, you won. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, he came right in and stole that yeah, shit, didn't he? he? Did. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, to not to be anti uh, climatic, but uh, how about Bob? Who would you like to jam? Yeah, with right. Exactly. It was, uh, no, uh, actually, would probably be either Weird Al Yankovic. No, <laughs> liar. no, liar. Like, like Queens of the Stone Age, liar, like the fighters. <laughs> like, I really love like, Nirvana. You know, any of my favorite bands, yeah. the Red Chili Peppers. I've seen a lot of their shows that, uh, that uh, they just. I want to play with a band that has a lot of energy. Yeah. You know, yeah. Any, oh, yeah. Of, any of those bands that I love, they could be that. But yeah. from knowledge, yeah. the best show that I've ever played that was that had the best sound was at St. Andrews Hall. Oh, cool. Yeah. Pop Roach and Taproot. Uh, we opened for them. And it was the so if I could go back to that time, mm-hmm. yes. That would stage sound? Yes. Yeah, stage sound was fucking amazing. <laughs> Absolutely the best stage sound right. I, I've ever, and I played all over the fucking place. That, play, that when we played, I felt I felt like my shit was under was under par for how good that fucking show was. <laughs> yeah. 
And uh, how about Kevin? I already said that social distortion at the film would be fine with me. Oh, Trump, oh, that's right. Sorry. Answer. Yeah, I was playing with Keith. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, so okay, I cool. Play with Keith. Play with Keith so. My dreams. <laughs> there you go. My bucket list is full. Fucking <laughs> 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 warm <laughs> I'm a fake warm He's like he's a fake warm <laughs> <laughs> Right. You, I'd have to say Rancid. I'd have to go with Tommy on that. Rancid's like one of my all-time favorite bass players. Matt Freeman is killer. Yeah. Just love playing his tunes. I still mastering some of his techniques, and he's just fucking out cold. Good. Nice. That's it. Awesome. Awesome. Come on! Come on! There you go. There you go. Fist Jeez. to the face. Boom. Done. That's it. <laughs> well, guys, thank you guys so much. I know that Keith just joined, but we're we're just about out of time. I've got. He ain't got shit to say anyway. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Well, he, well, he's gonna have to chime in on this he's last. Gonna he's gonna lie. <laughs> There's one oh. more question, very controversial, and that oh. is Ooh, my favorite: pineapple on pizza or no pineapple? No, no. Fuck no. No. <laughs> no. Pineapple, yes. Pizza, yes. Pineapple and pizza, fuck no. Pineapple's <laughs> a safe word. <laughs> pizza no matter <laughs> what. Not cockroaches. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think this is the first time a band has had a hard consensus on fuck pineapples. So oh, that's funny. Fuck pineapples. It's your first punk band. <laughs> <laughs> now see that's what i'm gonna have to do now i'm gonna have to keep track. don't like pineapple okay <laughs> it's too sweet <laughs> fuck that oh, awesome. like lemons man it's gotta be hard <laughs> all right well guys thanks again for being on fans with bands uh can't wait to see you guys live i know it's been a uh, too long for me to be there so i will definitely make a point to get out and see you guys so. okay awesome. good thank you yeah. august 14th we're going to be at the new dodge down in ham tramick with the hormones and the walking talking toxins you gotta come out fuck yeah awesome oh, man it's right. gonna blow up fantastic you coming we'll put you on the guest list all right well you in the wild there jack all right yeah, there, you go. Come to Andy. there you go Awesome. We're fucking off Indy like, in a couple of weeks. Yeah, the 26th and 18th. 26th and Indy? All right, cool. Awesome. Yeah, at the Melody Inn. Very cool. Join us, Chuck. We appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, Chuck. Thank you, awesome. Thank you so much. Well, I, I hope, hope I'm meeting you. I hope we join your show too much. <laughs> oh, no, it's fantastic, man. I, I, All right. I love having this show being screwed. Fuck yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just got screwed, Chuck. <laughs> All right. See you guys. Yeah, see ya. All right. Thanks to Tommy, Troy, Kevin, Bob, Keith, and Eric for joining me on this episode of Fans of Bands. Keep an eye on the Screw Facebook page for upcoming shows. See the show notes for all the details and link. These are tough times for everyone in the creative industries such as music. Your support of live streaming, purchasing music, and merchandise is critical. If you can help out your local artists, please do. If you are in the Michigan area, consider following the Playing in the Detroit Area Tonight Facebook page. It is a place for fans and bands to support each other and share our combined love of music. Thank you all so much for listening. Be sure to hit subscribe on your favorite podcast service to get each and every episode of Fans with Bands. Spread the word by rating the show and leaving a comment. We want to hear what you think. You can keep in touch by following us on social media. This is a Life in Michigan production. Until next time, be well and kick out the jam.